If you need a really quick and easy recipe for a weeknight meal, this is definitely it. And it is unbelievably delicious. Welcome to the Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. And today we are gonna make a cheesy ground beef and rice casserole in no time at all. This is seriously very quick and very easy. We're gonna do it in the Ninja Foodie six and a half quart, but you could also use the eight quart or the five quart or your instant pot with a crisping lid. So it's pretty versatile. You can make it with what appliance you have. First thing we're gonna do is get our ground beef sauteing. So I'm going to turn the Ninja Foodie on sear saute on high. And I'm gonna add one pound of 80-20 ground beef. Now you could use a leaner type of ground beef. That wouldn't be any issue at all. I'm just gonna put that in. Even though the pot's cold, it's not gonna make any difference, okay? And then I have one smallish onion. So it's about maybe a half to three quarters of a cup of onion that's diced in about quarter to half inch dice. No need to be too specific there. So go ahead and dump that in. And I have about six cloves, which is one good tablespoon of garlic that I minced, okay? And I really recommend using fresh, freshly minced garlic, but you could also substitute with one teaspoon of garlic powder if you wanted. I'm not gonna add this in just yet because I want to give the pot some time to heat up and start to brown up the ground beef. Otherwise, you could burn your garlic. So I'm just gonna hold on that for a minute, but I am gonna add in my seasonings, which is one and a half teaspoons of fine grind sea salt and one teaspoon of black pepper. Now, you could you know, decrease the salt if you wanted. You could increase the pepper. You know, you could change these around. But the, I'm keeping this really, really basic and very, very simple with seasonings. Then what I have is one cup of parboiled rice. Now, I am fairly certain, although I have not tested the recipe, that a regular white rice would work. But I happened to have a bag of the parboiled and I decided to give it a try and it worked really well. The difference between parboiled and a regular white rice is that it is parboiled in the husk. And so there's a little bit more nutrients. It's a little less refined than a traditional white rice. You also don't have to rinse it in this recipe. So it just makes it super easy. It's not gonna clump together. It just goes right in and sautés with the other ingredients. And you can actually do that right now. Put that right in. Now what I like to do, now that it's starting to heat up, is break up the meat. and then let it saute for maybe three to five minutes. We only want to partially cook the ground beef. We don't need to completely cook it because we are gonna go under pressure for a little bit of time. So if you have like a leaner ground beef, you might wanna add in a little bit of olive oil or a little bit of butter um, just to help, but this 80-20 should produce enough fat to go ahead and saute everything just fine. Okay, so once you start to see your ground beef browning up some, go ahead and add in your garlic. You wanna make sure you stir frequently once you add the garlic because you do not want it to sit on the bottom and burn. Uh, when you burn garlic, it becomes very, very bitter and it really does not taste very good in your dishes. All right, that looks good. It smells really good too. I can really smell that garlic. All right, so now we're gonna add in one cup of beef stock. Just move this around. Like I said, you don't have to cook the ground beef all the way. I still see pink parts, it's perfectly fine because we are now gonna go under pressure. So I'm gonna put the pressure lid on and I want it to be in the sealed position. We're gonna go to pressure cook. High is what we want and we want the time two minutes. 
This is gonna come up to pressure fairly quickly because the contents are already hot in the pot, so it's not gonna take that long. After the two minutes of pressure cook, we will allow the pot to natural release for five minutes, and then we will get some cheese and a little bit of cream in there and make up this delicious, cheesy topping. Cause that's right, we're gonna air crisp the topping so you get a creamy, delicious casserole with wonderful crispiness on top. Oh my gosh, it's so good. And we add in some vegetables. So this is a full meal and it's ready in under 30 minutes. It's absolutely wonderful. All right, so it took about three minutes to come up to pressure, seriously quick. We pressure cooked for two minutes and we did a five minute natural release and now we can release the remaining pressure. All right, so now that the pressure is released, we can go ahead and open the lid. Do that away from you because it's going to be steamy and it's not gonna look like much right now. Don't worry, it's about to get beautiful. So what I have here is four cups of a vegetable medley. This is a Normandy blend. So it has squash and uh, broccoli, cauliflower, carrots in there, the yellow squash. I think it might actually have zucchini. Yes, it does. So that's just what I had in the freezer. You could use any type of frozen vegetables that you like. You could use all broccoli if you wanted, no problems whatsoever. If you wanted to use fresh broccoli, cut your florets small so it's gonna cook in the amount of bake time that we do. If you wanted to use uh, fresh carrots, you could certainly put those in before the pressure cook time if you cut them to the right size. So cut them at about, you know, a half an inch to an inch thick and you could pressure cook. They'll be a softer, but they'll work out, I think, just fine. All right, so I've had these out since we started, just to kind of give them a head start on thawing. Now I'm gonna add them in to this mixture here, along with six ounces, which is about two cups of shredded cheddar cheese. And we can go ahead and just fold this all in. You wanna get the vegetables as you know, it's under the meat mixture as best you can so that they cook in the time that we bake. And then I also add in one half of a cup of heavy whipping cream. And if you really want to be indulgent, which I'm going to do right now, I put in two tablespoons of butter. Totally optional, but oh my gosh, it just adds another little layer of flavor. All right, so we're gonna stir this all together and let it sit while we make up our topping. Oh my goodness, looks so good. Usually I'll use three cups of a Normandy blend and then I also add in um, about a cup of peas because I happen to love peas, but it's totally up to you what vegetables you use. Look at that. Now that is becoming a cheesy rice casserole if I've ever seen one. All right, get those vegetables underneath here and we'll just leave it on keep warm until we're ready to add the topping, which takes just a few minutes to make up. All right, let me put this over to the side here so I can show you the next little ingredients here. I have three tablespoons of melted butter two ounces of cheese, which is about three quarters of a, three quarters of a cup, and one cup of panko. So I'm gonna dump in the panko. I like to dump that in first in case your butter's hot so you don't melt the cheese. We don't wanna melt the cheese before we put it on the top. We want the air crisper to do that. So mix this around. And then dump in your cheese. All right, that is our topping. Now, I wanna check the vegetables. I wanna make sure they've been sitting in there long enough to at least get soft because we're not gonna to need to air crisp this too long. So if you need to let this sit, or you can even put the lid down and do a little bake if your vegetables are really, really frozen. But let me just take one out and see how they're doing. I'll take a carrot out, those are notoriously the ones that don't get cooked. And we'll give that a taste. 
This looks so amazing. It smells so good. You can really smell the garlic. Oh my gosh, it's one of my favorite, favorite dishes. <laughs> Go figure, you know, I'm gonna use this. <laughs> Need a little more time. So what I'm gonna do, let's just go ahead and put this lid on. I'm not gonna put the sear saute on or anything like that. I'm just gonna keep it vented and keep it on the keep warm. If you put the sear saute on, you'd really have to stir it a lot. It's a very thick mixture right now and that's the way we want it because we don't want a soupy casserole. So I'm just gonna leave this here for about five minutes or so and then I will get the topping on and we'll get to air crisping. All right, let's go ahead and check this and see how we're doing here. It looks so good. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a nice stir. Oh my gosh, that looks amazing. All right, I can see that the vegetables have softened up, so that is good. I'm gonna get them all underneath here. And now we're gonna put our topping on. What I do is I just spread it out you know, so it covers the entire top. If you wanted to double this recipe or half this recipe, you certainly can. In fact, I tested it with a half of a batch and it was really delicious. But the topping ingredients remain the same because even if you have less in the pot, you still have the same amount to cover on the top. It's the same circumference. So you need to have the same amount of topping. Or you could double the topping. That would be fine too. All right. Oh, let's get it all out. This is this is the best part if you ask me. All right, looks good. Now we don't need to preheat or anything like that because we're just gonna close the crisping lid. It's gonna give me that notice of I have the wrong lid on and that's fine. We are gonna switch over to air crisp and we're gonna go at 365 but we're gonna take the time down to 15 minutes and we are gonna check it every five minutes. Now, 365, that's an odd number, right? It's, it's usually 375 or 350. Well, this is what I found. I found 350 took too long and it didn't brown up the topping. The, the, you know, I mean, why wait more time? It eventually would, but after like 15 minutes, it hadn't done anything. So I was like, oh, nope, not a good time. When I did it 375, it happened so fast that I was afraid that it wouldn't finish heating everything else through and making sure those vegetables were perfect. So I'm meeting in the middle and we're gonna go for somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes and we will check it every five minutes for the browning that you want. And that will vary too. So you may want it really brown, you may want it less brown. That's totally up to you. All right, so it's been five minutes. Let's give it a check. Oh, it's looking good already. Oh my goodness, yeah, it's getting it's getting nice and brown. But we still have a little bit longer to go. So I can see some of the cheese isn't melted yet. It's not burning at all. But if you were seeing spots that were too brown, drop your heat down. But we're gonna keep going. I might check it in another two minutes though. But probably by the time 10 minutes is up, this will be done and we'll be ready to serve it. Oh, it looks good. You know, it's really funny because on my other Ninja Foodi, the center gets really done before the edges, but on this one, the edges get done before the center. But it looks really good. I mean, we are done. So that took about, what, eight minutes, maybe eight and a half minutes. Um, I could probably let it go the rest of the time. Oh, you know what, let's do it, let's see. Will it burn? I don't think so. So we'll go the rest of the time so that it's a full 10 minutes. That makes sure that everything's hot and the vegetables are cooked. You know what else I wanted to mention while we're waiting this 30 seconds is parboiled rice is not instant rice. So I don't want you guys to get confused by that. Parboiled rice is different than instant rice. Don't use instant rice in this recipe. It will not work out um, very well. I don't think, I've never tried it, but I don't think it will work. All right, that's good enough. I just can't wait anymore. Let's go ahead and turn the Ninja Foodi off. It smells amazing. And we're gonna go ahead and dig in here. Mm. Oh my gosh, make sure I get up some vegetables. Wow. 
So it might not look that pretty on a plate, but you know what? When you're trying to make a quick dinner and you need it done lickety split, this is the kind of recipe that you wanna make. All right, let's give it a taste. I see a piece of broccoli here. Oh yes, it is definitely done. That is wonderful. All right, let's get this cheesy rice. This is unreal. My favorite part, of course, is the topping. I mean, how can you go wrong with butter, cheese, and panko, right? Mmm. Mmm. For something so simple and so quick to make, it is packed with flavor. But as always, use the vegetables that you like. Put the topping on that you like. I mean, you could do a potato chip topping, you could do breadcrumbs and seasonings, you could add in some tomatoes and make it more of an Italian-inspired uh, dish with changing the seasonings. There's so much you can do with this basic recipe. So as always, make it yours and make it delicious.